All right, in this video, we're going to be doing uh, the scripting, how to set it up, and build to the web. In order to build to the web with Oxygen, you're going to have to get a few things. You're going to have to have, obviously, in scripting, you're going to need the Java JDK, CMake, and if you're on Windows, like me, you're going to need a make file. Uh, so we're going to be... We're going to first start out with uh, Inscripten. Just go to, just look up Inscripten. Then go to their site. Uh, just go to their main page. Uh, go to their downloads up here. If you're on Windows, you can choose any of these. Linux or Mac, this one. Uh, the way I did it was with the web installer. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, just make sure that you build to your path as well. It sets up automatically to the path so you don't have to worry about it. Once uh, the wizard pops up and you do all that, you need the Java JDK. Just go back to Google. Search up Java JDK. Take you here. And you'll have Java 7 or Java 8. I have Java 7. I haven't tried it with Java 8 yet. I'm guessing it should work, but I just haven't tried it. So you go download. The JDK, not any of these two, the JDK. You're going to pop up this, and if you have Linux or Mac, obviously, you'll choose whatever you have. And Windows is down here. Make sure that you, if you have a 64-bit uh, Windows, you choose 64-bit. If you have 32-bit Windows, you choose 32-bit. Once you have that downloaded... You need your make file. For make file, if you're on Windows, of course. Um, you can whoops, wait a minute. Okay. You can go to the oxygen framework into in the readmes. If you go into the inscript and text, you'll see that it has this one right here. Go ahead and copy and paste this. Paste that. And download this one right here. The complete package. You don't need the source. So this one's fine. And it'll take you to the wizard. And it'll install it on your computer. And you'll be fine. Now you need the CMake file. Look up CMake. Uh, I downloaded 2.7. On the website, they already have 3.2. But I have running 2.8. So if you can find that, that'll be... I don't know if it'll be better or not, but it's what I have working right now. I have not tested 3.2. So... If if you want to go ahead and be adventurous and try it out, by all means, just go down. Just go to download, and you have them all here. You have it for your Windows, you have it for your Mac, and you have it for your Linux, whichever OS it is that you got. So once you have that installed into your computer, now we need to set it up in the path. Like he's telling you right here in the instructions for Windows. To get into the path, you need to go to your control panel, your system and security, system, advanced, environment variables, right here. The way I have it set up, Inscripten will do this automatically right here, and it will put it automatically into your path. 
This is for your system. Not it's not the individual user. This one up here is for the individual user. But this is fine. If if uh Inscripten puts it all in here, it's fine. The user will still be able to use this. Up here, what I did, I put the Java home, which tells you to put right here, which is the path to the JDK. I made a variable and I've set up everything in here. I have Inscripten, the path to Inscripten. I also have the path to the JDK to the bin. If you notice, this one does not go into the bin. This one does. The one in the path does. So just make sure you have that extra file that it goes into. I also have the make file so that I can build it. And it goes into the bin. And that's about it. That's all I got in there. Since I already have CMake over here installed in my path, uh, I, I, I can Let's see how I put this. This user, which is me, can come in here to the system and grab it. So I don't need to be bringing in CMake into my user. I think that, I hope that explains it well. Say okay, okay. Once you have that set up, maybe you can have it the way I, I had it set up. You can try it your own way, however it is that you have it, that you think is the best way. But that's the way I have it set up. Then you can come into example to see if it works. Uh, pick any of these examples. You have a complete demo. Uh, you have uh, a demo using box 2D, which is some watermelons. Let's go ahead and build that one. You go into the inscription folder. Oh, looks like I already have a builder. Let me go ahead and delete this. Go ahead and delete that. This build.bat, you're going to double click on that. You're going to run. It's going to do everything for you. So all you have to do is just wait for it to do it. This is going to take a little bit. I think it takes like, um, I don't know, around 30 seconds. It's not that bad. <laughs> so I'm just going to wait here and get it done. A few warnings will pop up, but that's fine. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're halfway. So this is what you'll have to do if um, you're using oxygen in order to make an HTML5 game. So you don't need any like plugins like Flash does. You need the Flash player. Um, oxygen built straight to HTML5, so no player is needed in order to use oxygen games on the web. Now in here, you'll have a build folder. Go into the build. And there it is. <laughs> Clicked on it a little too soon. This HTML file, that's what you're going to put. I'll go ahead and uh, open with, go ahead and open it with Google. This will pop up. It's downloading everything it needs. And there it is. Boom. This is a little box to the little demo it has on the website as well. Go ahead and click around. Go ahead and play with this. Okay. 
show the debug, making sure everything works fine. And it does. So if you ever use Oxygen for an HTML5 game, now you know how to do it. Thank you for.